<laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up, y'all? Welcome. We're super glad that you're here joining us for the tug of more. If you're new, it's a conversation between two friends. That's right. Uh, that we talk about topics that we kind of deal with internally about how we have this feeling that we're pulled into something greater, but we are living where we are. We all feel like there is more in our life, more that we're supposed to get to. There's a tug, attention, a fight. And so how do we get from where we are to where we want to be? How do we keep fighting and pulling into more? So that's what I, we talk about. I've got some tension that I have to address before we start with what this podcast. What is the podcast. tension that you have to just... If you are only listening to this episode and not watching, Whitney has a distraction on the table. Hey, you what got is, a pop socket. What the junk. This is basically my pop socket. That's not a pop socket. But look. That is a. better. That is a, I don't have that to is a jump rope. All made by a fairy hey. who's also seven hey. and rides a unicorn well she has a a bracelet the size of a s- s- child's jump rope this is that is covered in lucky charms <laughs> attached to her I love cell lucky phone charms. it's innovation that excites it makes this me is happy. not excite- i don't have to use my hands i can carry my phone and it won't drop uh and fall and shatter. i'd love to introduce you to something what you ready no what this is called a pocket. Okay. And so you just put things in it and then you don't have to put a yeah. bracelet on your cell phone. Well, I don't know. I love it and it makes me happy. And yeah. Whitney, I have to admit. What? I'm sorry that I teased your cell phone. Why? I'm not sorry. No, I was going to say, you're never sorry. I'm The one time uh, that I teased you, it was sad. and. Uh, when did you not, tease me? I don't know, a couple weeks ago. But nor- About what? I don't even remember. Yeah, it's because if you tease me, I actually have so many deep-rooted insecurities <laughs> that I'm afraid that what you're saying is actually true. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'll deal with I'll deal, I'll with, deal with that internal issue that you are ridiculous. that you are obviously bringing up passively <laughs> it, aggressively. It is, yeah, I mean, we're not passive aggressive. We're just aggressive. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, what that's are we a, talking about? That's a whole episode. No, uh, thank you for apologizing, but it's not necessary. Yeah. However, that's that's a sign of a good leader, don't you think? Someone who's not afraid to say sorry first, so that we can then have an open conversation. Is that a transition into yeah, our topic today? Yeah, trying of the day? really hard. <laughs> So something you and I just talked about kind of off camera is the idea that many times in leadership of any kind, one of the greatest tools that we have is humility. Absolutely. Sometimes that humility comes out first with an I'm sorry. Yeah. I think sometimes humility is a word that we're like, I am humble. I'm a humble person. I have a humble heart, but really a way to like diffuse any conversation or conflict is to just go in with an apology first and see where it can take you. And I think we found as leaders, that's who we are. Sometimes we apologize for things we shouldn't, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we're trying to have the conflict yeah. to solve the issue. You have to have conflict if you want to be a leader. Mm-hmm. If you're unwilling to have conflict, you really are not a leader because uh, you can't lead people through anything. Well, you can only lead to a certain level. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah, only lead to anything. the the level of where everyone still agrees, which is not, not very far. Very far. Uh, we can't even agree on where we went to lunch today. So nope, uh, I wanted wings, but I ate Chipotle. That's right. And so we have to be willing to have conflict, but starting with humility is the best way to have conflict. And I think a sign of a really great leader. Yeah. Is yeah is being willing to say I'm sorry. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not saying a manipulative I'm sorry that you don't mean it. I've had people tell me. Oh yeah. They say they say this. They say I'm sorry you feel that way. No. I'm like, then they're like, I apologize. I'm like, that's not an apology. No. That's you just blaming me and me apologizing for weird. my feelings. Right. I'm saying walking into when something legit uh, isn't your fault. Right. Now, now, self-awareness, we did a whole podcast on self-awareness that, that in most conflict situations, it's at least 5% my fault. 100%. At least. Like some- it might be vastly. Rachel's fault, my wife. Yeah. It might be vastly your fault, executive right. pastor. It might be vastly somebody else's fault, but there is 5%. It's not typically. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just, just saying easy. At, at least right. 5%. Right. I didn't communicate well. Right. I had too high of expectation. I was in a bad mood. Right. Right. And so when we can walk in and just identify that maybe we were the catalyst to their 95% right. by our 5%. 
that I'm sorry can help grease the tracks. Yeah, I think so often we want to prove that we're right and that we're in charge or even uh, that like they got it wrong. They didn't see it correctly. But even if all of that is true, that if we can walk in first with a sorry, it, it's going to start. It's going to really help things. We were talking about it as it relates to communicating a shift and a need in like culture and in moments for us, our culture is so important. Yeah. The way we do what we do, how we do the things that we do, the way our team and dynamic is. And so we were talking about like in those moments where redirection is necessary, starting with an I'm sorry is super good. Yeah. Do you have a good example for people of a time that you think of when that help was helpful or no? Yeah, I feel like constantly. Yeah. Um, so like if we're having a staffing conflict, yes. right? And uh, like priorities aren't being met right. or uh, like people coming in late or whatever. Yeah. What I'll do many times is I'll come into that conversation and say, hey, listen, uh, we ha kind of have an issue and yeah. I want to say, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that I haven't talked about this earlier. Yep. I'm sorry that I gave you five things to do when I should have only given you three, right? Like admit your fault. Yeah. Because if you will admit your fault, then maybe the other person will feel safe enough to admit their fault. Correct. I'm in charge. I'm, I joke about it right. uh, as the leader, the buck stops with me. Right. And so like, if something is epically failing, it's, it's, it comes back to me. Maybe uh, I yeah. hired the wrong employee. Right. I'm sorry. I hired you. Right. So, you know, that's no, a little extreme no. example, but <laughs> no, I think it's good because it, what you said is right. We own our piece of it, but it sets the atmosphere and the tone for people to be able to feel safe enough to say where they've screwed up. I think a lot of people have been in environments and work environments where like not doing it perfectly was not acceptable or, or, huh. uh, they didn't want to disappoint or, or cause frustration, or they didn't want to be pointed out as the one who didn't get it perfectly right. And what you say, I think, is what helps so much is it, it diffuses the, the moment to say, hey, wait a minute, we're just humans doing our best. Yeah. So there's like a, a safe and even playing ground right now for us to just share what we did wrong and then talk about how we can move forward. Yeah. So, yes, you're in charge, but at the same time. Uh, in that same regard, your goal is not to say, I'm so usually to say, I'm sorry, I hired you get out of here. It's usually to say, Hey, I'm sorry about this conflict we're having. How can we make it better and move forward? And yeah. I, I think we found that that is really the sign of someone who wants to step into more for sure. When we've had staff who were unwilling to say they were sorry, unwilling to admit fault, unwilling to even begin with a, an apology they typically just stayed stuck right where they were yeah and they weren't ever able to go into what's next yeah or, or yeah or pride pride stops us from being able to Absolutely. say we're sorry now it's old it's back in the day it was reruns when i watched it for the first time you know what tv show i'm about to reference no happy days okay happy remember days. happy days yeah, yeah yeah so there's a character on happy days named the Fonz. yeah the Fonz. he's the and, man uh, and Fonz, who's like this tough cool guy yeah. right leather jacket it was always weird because he was like 10 years older than all the high school kids he was right. hanging out I with don't really but understand always with a high school girl anyways Fonz, <laughs> he now sells like insurance and like diapers for old people or something. really oh yeah i've seen on some commercials on like hmm. Fonz, you have fallen far, far. so far. on the tv show yes it was like impossible I for him to this. say, I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember And this. so like, if there was something happened in the show where he had to say sorry, he would go like this. I'm, I'm or wrong. <laughs> he couldn't, I, I was, and it's like, he couldn't get it out. Yeah. And then finally would be like, sorry. And then would change the, that's not a way to lead. No. The Fonz was always by himself. Right. He was not rolling with the crew. Right. And his crew were high school kids. Right. <laughs> It's true. And so like our ability to admit fault yeah. is huge. Absolutely. Uh-oh. I uh <laughs> so we've talked about like ministry hurt and Absolutely. like hurt baggage on the thing before. Yeah. So I was really trying to get over some pain that I had went through. Uh-huh. And man, talking to counselors and friends and my wife and everything, and it just still right. was this nagging thing in my mind. And so I talked to a buddy of mine about it who's a pastor. And, uh, and he said, Hey, Trustin, you have to admit that you allowed yourself to get into that situation. Hmm. 
And I was like, I was so mad at him. Right. It's like, what do you what do you mean I allowed my no, I didn't. This person took advantage of me. Right. This is what was said. This is not true. He said, Yeah, but you stayed. Yeah, you were there. Right. And he was like, if you refuse to admit you knew this was going on, right, you stayed long, or you just accepted it for if you will never admit that you're a part of it, you're never gonna be able to heal. It's really good. And dude, when I actually chewed on that, yeah, it helped me stop being a victim. No, it's it helped good. me stop being the one taken advantage of. Yeah. It after the fact. Yeah. Because I admitted fault. Right. And I think that in leadership we have to be able to be willing to admit fault. So I don't say I'm sorry as a ploy. No, right. To like open communications i say it because i really am like dude i wish i was a better leader i'm sorry we're having this problem right i didn't know how to lead you good enough right sorry man no yeah it it has allowed i think so much space for real feedback that then can actually allow people to open up and see where they've where they're screwing it up where they're doing wrong where they're missing the mark and no you're right we all have fault in every any relationship any dynamic that we're in and so often we get stuck in the like i know i'm right about this piece yeah. i know i'm right here but when we just won't look at it we, we're we're stuck and we we found this tool and i think it helps so much and we were talking about it and it just felt like such a simple elementary thing that like when my kids fight with each other since they were little it didn't really matter who was who is the, the responsible party i made them both apologize yeah. and then move forward and i think that uh it's such an elementary school thing that once we get older, we think, no, in order to be in charge, I have to be tough and strong yeah. and right. Yeah. No, I, I love that. It's a good keep. Yes. What? You have a new thought. No, I, I don't. No. Oh. I thought you said you had a tool or a thing that we no, were I'm just saying, talking about. This is about. a tool that we've taught our team is yeah. simply, hey, when you're going to approach a conflict, something we talk about all the time is the love sandwich of like, I love you. You're the best. Here's the conflict. Now I love you. You're the best. But what we've had to teach our team in the next level of leadership is that it's not just, hey, I love you, you're the best, but it is a walk of humility to say, hey, we're having this issue mm -hmm. and I recognize where I am. I recognize my ish, my part. And so now walking into it, I think we always kind of say, hey, I'm here for you and I'm sorry for. And yeah. when we just insert that into the conversation, it changes everything. Well, okay, so anytime I find myself in a, moment where i don't want to say i'm sorry yeah you don't know why pride pride yeah no you're right yeah like if rachel and i are in an argument about something right and 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 i start running the narrative in my head like i'm not saying i'm sorry for this right that's because i'm being a jerk right that's because i don't want to be wrong yeah or or because man it's so easy to like you know those old school scales yes like a balance yeah to look at like, right. okay, most of the fault is on them and only a little bit of the fault is right. on me. Right. So I will not say I'm sorry. Or at least I will not say I'm sorry first. But but there, but listen, what right. are we talking about? We're talking about making progress. Right. We're all called, we're all feel the pull of the tug of more. Yeah. And if, if I'm sorry, can just be the bump of momentum right that's needed no i think there's been seasons where we've been afraid that by saying sorry we were just being insecure mm -hmm. and so we started to be like maybe we shouldn't say we're sorry as much but what you're saying is progress is more important than the pride. like pride <laughs> of yeah of the pride of i'm i'm a good leader i'm in charge i got this and it, it, there, there's really never a scenario where it do, it's not needed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if really you can look at it. Cause I know there's people that are like, yeah, but when I look at the situation, I'm not at fault at all. Yeah. But it really doesn't matter if there is or isn't. We're, there's always something you can find to say you're sorry for. Yeah, we had a staffing issue here uh, over a year ago. Yeah. And we had a staff member that got caught in a lie. Yeah. Like caught, busted, like three, five right. angles of like, we know you're not Big, telling the truth. Right. And so we have a meeting and I explain like, hey, here's what happened. Yeah. Here's what was said. Here's what I know the truth is. Right. And so, man, I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Now they're already caught. hundred. Yeah. But I say, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of come clean and like, tell me what, what's the motivation? Is there something extra going on that I don't right. know about? 
And like in that moment, they were unwilling right. to humble up in any capacity yeah. and say they were sorry. Right. And so like for us, we could do a whole other episode on lying. No, but yeah. for us, lying is like a game, is like a deal breaker. Yeah breach of con relational contract absolutely not just because of the moral uh thing in which we lead to church organization no. but because there's trust is necessary in a job environment and especially in the type of running into more that we do and if trust is broken we can't really we can't do this anymore yeah and so that was already happening yeah but we extended grace again yeah and then with no i'm sorry right it's like what are we doing here right we're we're, just we're not we're repeating. not on the same team. Right. We're never going to be able to get past this, and so a change has to be made. Yeah. And so as leaders, we've had podcasts before about releasing people, yeah. firing people. We had another one we just did about when to stay or when to go. Right. And uh, I've actually had a couple of people reach out to me that have quit jobs. Yeah. And are so happy they did. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're unwilling to ever say you're sorry, then man, you got to search your heart. Right. Figure out why, because I think in that scenario, um, they didn't want to admit it because if they admitted the truth of the lie that they were caught in, there was a whole other bundle of junk they were going to have to unravel. Yeah. And that it was easier for them to live in the pride than it was to unravel all the pieces of what they would have to face. And I think that for us, like well, all we can do as leaders is what you said, provide that safe space. Yeah. It's up to the other person whether really they're good. ready to step into that or not. I got another thought uh -oh. to go with it. Do it. So whenever we say we're sorry, it should be followed with a because, not a but. Oh, yes. No. There's nothing that drives me crazier. Everybody listen to this who's my friend or in <laughs> relationship with me. There's nothing that drives me crazier than I'm sorry, but. Yeah. You ain't sorry. No, right. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, but you. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you here's really why I push did my it. buttons. I'm sorry, but you should have done it different, right? I'm, Those are I'm not sorry. Insane. So if you're a person who needs to learn how to start saying I'm sorry, yeah, watch out for the but and add a because. Yeah, I'm sorry because. No, something with I my kids and in, in our home that we've struggled in different moments to say like I'm sorry is one. Uh, it's not I apologize. We need to say, I'm sorry. Like the word sorry is a lot different than just an apology. Cause an mm. apology feels more uh, like a face fake. Uh, or, uh, or like a legal contract. Yes, like a, like a, yeah. like a, I am only doing this because it is necessary in order to get the next step. And I was like, no, say, I'm sorry. Um, There's some remorse. That's an actual. And then sorry means a change. So even when I don't have a whole lot of fault, but hmm. maybe I'm sorry that I didn't talk about this sooner. What I'm saying in that is I'm sorry. Next time we're going to talk about it right away. You know, we're, we're, we're going to make an actual adjustment from what we've done wrong to what we need to do better. And if we can't acknowledge, yes, I did something wrong. The, but is like, but I'm justifying why I did. So that's why it doesn't work. I'm sorry now has to have a, what's the actual change and shift that we're going to make moving forward. Yeah. And so like, I'm sorry, I hit you sister, but you hit me first is like, Nope, I'm sorry because I should never hit you no matter what. And yeah. the same is true in leadership concept. It's funny to bring the kids into it. Uh, Lily and Titus are seven and eight. Yes. My kids. And yeah, Rachel will tell them, you know, say you're sorry. Yeah. And they'll be like, I'm, I'm sorry. It's like, right. no, you're not, no, you're you not. little punk. No, right. You're not sorry. And as adults, sometimes we can still carry that. Now, I mean, if we want to take this into marriage, which we can, yeah. we're not only leadership. No, whatever. Here, right. Mar marriage is leadership that like, we've got to be willing to man, say, say we're sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, in any relationship really is the the humility to say you're sorry and then the grace to like forgive and mm -hmm. to keep moving forward. And so I think as leaders in marriage, in families, in homes, whatever is that first step of saying, Hey, I'm going to start the conversation of moving forward. So therefore I'm going to diffuse it by saying, I own this piece. I hope you'll have the grace for me. Um, and so now that I've done that, I'm going to give you the grace if you'll own up to your pieces. So let's put a couple handles on it. Okay. Um, Living Church is growing. Yeah. We're adding new dynamics yeah. of ministry, yeah. new opportunities for people to get involved. Right. 
And so here's one that's just kind of came yeah. to light that we have have we have to choose how we're going to handle it. Right. So like there's only seven days in the week. Right. And there's a lot of different ministry things that are happening. Yeah. We have um, uh, band rehearsal. We have youth uh, ministry. Youth ministry. We have women's and men's events. Yep. We have life groups. Yep. We have discipleship classes. We have like meetings for different teams that are <clears throat> involved in ministry. And like, so like just elders, and, directors, and all we the things. we just moved buildings. If you're new, this is not our normal studio. Yeah. This is a makeshift studio in a closet. That's right. <laughs> and so in this season, we've had people in the church, not many, but a couple get a little frustrated. Yeah. They'll send us an email or they'll have a conversation like, you know, you guys have this event on the same night as this event, and that makes me mad. Yeah. Well, we could right. prove them wrong. Right. We could explain how they don't understand all the moving pieces, and because of their lack of knowledge, they're wrong. Right. And we could win. Yeah, right. But what's better is to say, hey, I'm sorry that you weren't able to go to life group and the women's event. Right. I'm sorry that we had to have band rehearsal on a Wednesday night. Right. And so you had to miss. I'm sorry that our youth conference right. is the same time as this other pastoral event. That I'm, And so like, we're right. Yeah. But I'm still sorry that those people are experiencing that because, God, this is about to be good. No, right. Because growth brings problems. Right. Growth brings difficulties. Correct. And so we can either lead with an iron fist that's like, you're an idiot who's not as smart as me, so quiet, or we can say, I'm sorry you're experiencing that. Yeah. Let me help lead you into say, more. Exactly. Our goal as leaders should be to lead those around us into the same more that we're trying to get to. Yeah. And not to just run into everything by ourselves, but to lead them alongside and to say, hey, I, I am sorry that this is difficult. I'm sorry that this is a hard thing, but let me uh, ex uh, let me extend you that understanding. Maybe you can extend me some grace to see mm. my side of it. And hopefully we can move forward together. And so I think that it's a concept that we have to be willing to swallow when we are leading something smaller because the bigger and the greater, and the, it, it, there's always gonna be yeah. disagreement. There's always gonna be conflict that arises because it's different people making different choices than maybe they would make. It's just the way it is. Man, if the if the world could swallow right, this right. idea. No, like it's true. We're filming this now in uh what is it end of january 2022 yeah but like just i mean i guess it's been a couple of years now at our last presidential elections right. no the chaos there was so much it. right uh, animosity in right. the country and even now with all the covid pieces mm -hmm. do you know what people do they're trained to not say they're sorry right because if you say you're sorry then you start admitting fault right 100%. and so so presidents on both sides of the aisle don't say they're sorry. Right. Politicians don't say they're sorry. Right. Rich business owners. Right. Doctors. The FDA. Who's right. the other one? The the F C C CDC. Yes. They, it's like literally. It's it's a it's a tactic. Right. That if we say we're sorry, that opens us up for a potential lawsuit. Right. Right. Man, alive, guys. If if we could just say, hey, you know what? We know that we said this is what you should do or this is what's best, but then new information comes out. Hey, we're sorry that this is how we let everybody. Right. But but now here's the new thing. But instead, what we do is we double down. Right. And we start protecting agendas. Right. right. Instead of actually making progress. No. How's America going to make progress through COVID? Somebody has to admit. We don't really know what we're doing. We screwed something up. <laughs> right. No, I think that's the piece that you and I as leaders have always wanted to stay no matter how much God allows us to step into more no matter how big our organization grows is that we are just humans yeah. doing our very best. And as humans, we are fallible people. Like we are not going to get it right and perfect every time. And Fallible? Fa fallible. 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 I thought you used Did the I word. Did I say fallible? Well, you said fallible, and I was I like, Ooh, I maybe that's a word. Fallible, failable. We're failable. Isn't yeah. that a word? F A L L I B L E. Doesn't it mean fat to be failing? I don't know. Google it, y'all. I'm probably yeah. wrong. No, but, I like it. I want it to be a word. Yeah. I just had never yeah. used it. We, I, that we have to admit that we're people who can screw up. Yes. And, 
And that's what I really believe makes other people want people, wait, people want to follow people who will admit that they're, they're just humans. And I yeah. think we even in insecure moments have felt like if I can just prove that I'm good enough and smart enough and, oh, and great enough, and then they will want to follow. But what we've learned, the more that we've led things is that actually the more human we are, the more we open ourselves up to the vulnerability to admit that we may have fault. Uh, the more people are actually willing to keep coming alongside the vision and the heart of what we're doing. And mm -hmm. I think that in any organization we're leading, it's truth as a parent, man, so much uh, of my home has had more peace when I was willing to admit the part as a parent that I screwed up yeah. in every area we're going to be more unified and be able to go into more together. If we wouldn't just say, Hey, we're just people doing yeah. our best. No, it's really and good. And not be these superheroes. Just, uh, the other day, uh, something happened to me that I got pretty upset about. So we, it's a, it's a, a part of an organization that we're connected to. Yeah. So there's like another ministry organization that right. we're a part of. Right. And so I don't, they made a decision that I think is, Foolish. Foolish. There's a good I way. still stand by my decision that yes. that this is not the right move. Yes, that when you line it all up together, it's clear that this was not the right thing to do. And so I called um the guy over the organ or yeah. who's like next level up in the organization. Yeah. Say, hey man, can I talk to you for just a minute? And right. I laid out what I'm frustrated by. Mm -hmm. And like I wasn't like yelling and lost my no, junk. No, no, no. But I told him, like, dude, I just need to know I'm frustrated about this. Yeah. This ticks me off. Yeah. I think that we've made a really foolish choice for unethical and unhealthy reasons. Right. Right. And so uh, you need to fix this. Yeah. And I just want you to know how I feel. Yeah. And I was like, he said, okay, anything else? I was like, no, screw you. That's not what I said. But I was like, <laughs> so no, I, that's it. That's the way you were feeling, but that's what you said. And so, I mean, I end, we ended the phone call amicably. Right. Like, right, hey, right. dude, love you. All right. Good luck. Right. Right. And, I text him back like 30 minutes later. I said, hey bro, I'm sorry if I came off a little hot. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry if I came off a little bit like mad. Yeah. And I said, I am mad. Yeah. But you didn't deserve mad yeah. trust in. Right, right, right. And so like, I love you. Yeah. I think that you're doing a good job in a ton of areas. Right. And I understand that this wasn't all the way in your control. So I'm sorry if I made you feel like I don't love you, I'm yeah. sorry if I made you feel like I've disrespected you. Yeah. My heart was not to disrespect yeah. you. I'm emotionally invested. I want this to go well. I don't like sending those follow-up calls no, or messages right. because I'm still right. I've, you still feel justified in the thoughts oh, and opinions. And time will tell that I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> but like he, and I didn't lose my junk. If, if you lose your junk on somebody, you'd better call and tell them you're sorry. Right, right, right. But sometimes, we just get caught in complex situations yeah. that cause emotion. Absolutely. And and sometimes somebody gets the brunt of that, even if it's not their fault. No, that's really And good. so I called and said, I'm sorry, because I respect him and I want us to still have a good relationship. Right, right. No, that's super good. I think that. And then when what I said is true, I won't say, I told, told you, you so. so. <laughs> but maybe they will say sorry. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that that's really good that that uh, even if what you originally were talking about or originally, even if it went different than you uh, anticipated or what you said, when you recognize that you might've been going off on them and it wasn't all the way their fault, but what you also said in that was so good. You said, I just want it to be heard. And I think the thing is people just want to be heard. Yeah. And so if you will tell somebody at the top, Hey, I'm sorry for this, that, or the other, they feel like you're actually willing to listen uh, to what they have to say. And as leaders, we have to be willing to listen on both sides of the coin. The fact was he listened to you. Well, he gave you the time and energy. And so now as a leader, you respect him more yeah. because he was willing to listen to your complaints rather than be like, hey man, no, it is right, whatever, and hang up on you, you yeah. know? And so it, it's a double-edged sword and it's a two-sided coin or whatever yeah, it is no, the, that we learn how to listen, be gracious, and apologize with humility. Uh, it's the only way that conflict can work. Um, what would you tell somebody uh -oh. who know. hasn't been good at saying they're sorry and knows they need to shift, knows they need to offer some heartfelt yeah. apologies. Like what what we're doing is very 
against their grain. Yeah. How do you, how do they step into that? No, I mean, the first is, is what you said about uh, the fawns. Like, I know it's hard to say, but just say it. Hmm. Like, just do it. You're going to feel so much better um, for you. And I, we've talked about it before. Any type of conflict conversation we have, we just write it all the way out. Mm -hmm. If it's really hard for you to do, but you know that you need to go into this conversation and actually do it. But you know, like it's going to when I get there, I'm not going to want to write it out and mm -hmm. and, and just do it. Yeah. If you have to read it out loud, fine. Hey, I want to say something. If I'm going to read it, do it. Uh, it's that the things that hold us back from more, more are our unwillingness to just try something different than what we've done before. And so if you've not been saying, sorry, how's that working for you? Yeah. Like, look at how that's working for the relationships around you and the people around yeah. you. And if it's not working, well, let's shift it. And yeah. I think just do it. I mean, the only thing is do it. And if, and the thing is about anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. Yeah. And really and truly, I think what we've seen, the reason why we've gotten better at it is because of the response when we do. Hmm. We've recognized this is what works well. Yeah. This is what helps other people be led into more. And the more we've been able to pull our team into more, the more we just want to keep pulling them there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just try it. Try something different. Yeah. Yeah. So just try it. Yeah. And then I think we touched on a little bit, but search your own heart. Yeah. Like really well, self-examine. Why, why are you unwilling? Why is this so hard? Yeah. Okay, no, it's so really good. that's if we're trying to no, someone so keep, trying say one more thing though that okay. because I think you and I at certain points had to search our insecurities, search what other people have told us about what we weren't good about being leaders or or whatnot. We had to actually take a minute and say why am I why am I feeling the way that I feel? And we talk about emotional health on this yeah. constantly, and it's probably likely somewhere that someone else in your life made you feel like you were sorry all the time or that you hmm. couldn't do it right. And so if you'll actually look at that. Or that you were made to feel weak, so now yes. you have to be portrayed as strong. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if you'll actually look at that and deal with that, uh, then it will it will help you be able to do it. It was I just wanted to put a little no, more handle great. on it, do it because I think that that so many people face that. I know you and I both have. So yeah, all the time. What was the next story? Well, okay. So on? no, you didn't. So that was the setup of if you have a hard time, yeah. what do you do? What would you say to somebody who receives a sorry? Hmm. So like I know there's a lot of couples. Yeah. That listen to the tug of war, which I'm really glad yeah. that they do. And so maybe there's a spouse sitting here going, "I need to say I'm sorry." Yeah. What what do we need to tell the people who, who are going to receive who are sorry. going to receive the I'm sorry? We talked about this. I don't think on the podcast, maybe just in a marriage series that yours, you and Rachel and Aaron and I have done together. But there's usually one person in the dynamic who's good at apologizing, yep. and one person who's better at like forgiving quickly. And but but sometimes it's both or mm -hmm. like the same other person. same person. And so I think it's just understanding. Uh, that, hey, if they're going to say these words, I might be fast at saying sorry. So they may not mean as much to me, but I need to listen and understand that hmm. they're trying to level the playing field. They're, they're trying. trying to have the grace extended to them. They're trying to say, hey, I want to understand and I want, I want to actually get on the other side of it. And then what is that relationship worth? If, is that whether it's business, whether it's a, a personal relationship, family, whatever, it, it, are you wanting to take that into more? And if so, then you better respond. You better listen actually yeah. to what they're saying That's really good. rather than just shut it down. Yeah. This is a deep one. Uh oh. Let's go deep. So if you get told you're sorry and you're trying to receive the sorry, you have to make a conscious decision to not weaponize that sorry. Oh, man. But what I see couples do a bunch. Yeah. And I'm going to say husband because I'm a dude and guys talk to me more about it. So yeah. it probably goes both directions. But a guy will tell his wife, hey, I'm sorry yeah. for whatever happened. Yeah. And then the next conversation or even in that moment, the wife will pick up that sorry and use it to win. Hmm. Use it to belittle or keep the person in the same place. And so like if you've been waiting for a I'm sorry, hear it. And don't pick it up and beat them over the head with it. Because and I'm sorry is transparent. Yeah. And when someone gets transparent, don't laugh at their transparency. Yeah. But like, accept the I'm sorry. And hopefully, their I'm sorry 
helps you to offer your I'm sorry. Correct. I've heard it said that the only way for a marriage to be healthy is for two people to be good at forgiving. Right. No, right. Two people have to be good at I'm sorry. Right. No, it's really good. But I think it's true in every context of relationship because in the same way, you can't then pull it back out on yep. your employer or your employee. Yep. Well, you that, told me you were sorry. It was so busy. Right. Yeah. That's not going to work. Yeah. And so recognizing if you are the employee or if you're the one who uh, in that conversation received a sorry first, don't pull it back out and yeah. be like, yeah, you, yeah, you, but you are the one who screwed it up here or you're the one who caused this problem there. Um, if, if we really believe that sorry means we're taking a, a step forward and we're shifting something into something else, then we have to have the grace to trust that that's what it is and allow time for that to happen. It may not happen overnight. Yeah. Just, just this week, we talked with our staff about how we've been in a busy season. We've been really head down and running hard, but that we're sorry our intention for this next year is to connect more and to be closer to, yeah. uh, in relationship with each other. And if one of our team or even ourselves, whatever started, uh, the very next week going, well, see, you're not connecting. You're not, you're not doing the thing that you said because you know, you planned something in two weeks, but it's not today. Th these are unreasonable expectations really of good. the sorry. Yeah. We've got to give it real expectation of, okay, now there's change. There's forward progress. Well, we got to give time and space for that progress to actually come. That's great. And we've got to actually evaluate, okay, when's the right time to then look and go, Hey, have we made some change? Have we made some progress? And measured progress that may not, again, it's that tug and tension of the tug of more, may not be all the way where we want it to be, but is it better than we were? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving forward. And it's, it's great. important. Yes. Start with I'm sorry. Start with it. Start with it. It's good. Do it, y'all. Hey, so glad you guys joined us to be a part of this conversation. Yeah. Hopefully, as you've been listening, you've been talking or thinking about who should you give a I'm sorry to. Yeah. Give it a shot, man. Yeah let's let's grease the wheels here let's with some humility humility right heal some relationships yeah. if you ever have questions uh that you'd love for us to talk about hit us up there's let's nothing more that we love than to hear what's going on in your lives and your right. ministry and your leadership dynamic how we're helping give us the testimony of what right. you've learned tell us something good how yeah. it's going what's been uh what's really helped you and how you're tugging into more like tag share follow comment subscribe all the things see ya